Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 9th, I think, of June. And we'll be able to extend that beyond that with the extended GFS and East Champ Ensembles. Maybe on trying a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS to at the end of the video for the next four weeks and that gets us uh, well in the second half of June I should get time back for you in a moment just to say that first the video today was our 6am UK weather forecast we've also released the EC 30 day forecast for UK and rest of Europe too and if that wasn't enough a little bonus video was released today as well and uh, that one is looking at the possible weather for download festival and also le mans check out those two uh, free videos if you'd like to do that thank you so much uh, everybody now 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 the charity live stream that we did on saturday absolutely epic three and a half hours i was live streaming for and we had uh, loads of guests uh, with that and uh, you know we had um jeffers we had Steffi, we have Mark Bogan, we had uh, Ben, lovely Ben, uh, Ainty as well, and I had uh, a couple of uh, recordings as well from Richard Trott and also uh, from uh, Brian Gaze from the Weather Outlook as well. So it was unbelievable, it was an absolutely amazing uh, live stream. Thank you so much, everybody, who was on the live stream uh, with us and those that have catched up on demand subsequently. The uh, live stream is there on the channel for uh, anybody to watch you know so you can go back watch it on demand if you want it's a long stream obviously three and a half hours so i suggest you take it in bite sizes um but uh, but yeah you know it, it was an amazing night and and lots and lots of really interesting uh, discussion as well and we raised loads of money for uh, rainbows of course that was the point of the stream to uh, raise as much money as we can for uh, rainbows hospice so i was plugging away at this all of uh, last week. I thought we'd be finished with it by now and I'll have the final total for you. But actually, it turns out the donations are still coming in. So at the moment, we're just giving page. This is combined with what we earn from the charity live in terms of super chats and donations people have given on the just giving page. At the moment, we're sitting at £1,708. And bear in mind, my original target was £500. So we've gone well over that. Um, and uh, yeah, but don't Donations are still coming in. Had another couple of donations arriving today from uh, very, very kind people. So I'm going to leave it a couple more days. I'll perhaps give you the final total on Friday or Saturday, maybe. Um, so uh, just watch this space on that. But yeah, thank you so much, everybody. If you'd like to give a donation to uh, Rainbows, you know, if you was aware that we're fundraising for Rainbows Hospice, they provide vital care for uh, children and young people with uh, life-limiting and terminal conditions. If, in the instance, if you'd like to give a donation, then, um, you know, just come to the Just Giving page and donate what, what you want. Let's see how high we can get that before before we can. Could we go to 2K? Wouldn't it be amazing if we could get that to 2K? That might be a little bit too much. But, you know, anyway, it's incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the generosity. Of course, we've done this in memory of my mum, the amazing Mrs P, who it was her one-year uh, anniversary of, of when she passed on Saturday on the 27th of May. So that's the reason I was live-streaming uh, on that day. And uh, and it was, it's just absolutely incredible. I'm totally blown away. I know Rainbows will be utterly delighted, you know, with, uh, with the money that we have raised as well. They will be absolutely... Um, yeah, absolutely grateful for the money. All donations I've received cost six and a half million pounds them to run their, uh, you know, run their hospice um, last year. So they get 20% from the National House, so 80% the rest comes from uh, charitable donations. So any amount of money is gratefully uh, received by Rainbows and by myself. And thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Unbelievable. The Gals Webber's community yet again proving to be absolutely amazing. Thank you so much to all of you. Right, going to start off with the searching temperature. The CT is currently sitting at 12.6, which is around 1.5 degrees above 61 to 99 average. That provisional to yesterday, to no, to uh, Sunday, to the 28th of uh, May. So uh, that's not updated yet. We'll update a little bit later on. I shall bring that update tomorrow. But uh, yeah, a significant warm and average 
Um, now, he's probably going to come in under 13. I would imagine he'll probably end around 12.7. Maybe something like that. But we shall see where we are at month's end. Beats of a GFS, upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. The net cover winds at London today. The red line is the first year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off quite substantially above average with those upper air temperatures. Although it looks like we're generally staying quite significantly above average right way through the first week of June as well. It looks pretty warm, doesn't it? Not necessarily overly hot. Not again up here, you know, to the level we would have to get to get to 30 degrees or so. But nevertheless, talking about sort of low mid-20s Celsius temperatures over a sustained period over the uh, next week, 10 days, which is really quite warm for early June. And as we go into the second week of June, which is this period just here, it's like we generally say quite warm then as well, actually. So above average temperatures continuing for the uh, next couple of well, weeks. Precipitation-wise, loads of dry weather as well. Through the first week of June, air, barely any measurable precipitation at all uh, in London through the first week of June. Second week of June might start um, a little bit more unsettled, might start to turn a little bit more showery. Of course, that's at the same range and a long way off, but there are quite a few ensemble members there that uh, are bringing precipitation spikes, so they might be going for a few thundery showers and whatnot. Temperature anomalies from the 30th of May to 7th of June actually coming out a little bit below average for England and Wales, above average for Scotland and Northern Ireland. That's probably a surprise given that ensemble graph, isn't it? I can only assume there's going to be cool nights and or overcast cloudy days with easy winds keeping the temperature pegged back across England and Wales. Warmest temperatures are for Scotland and Ireland. And precipitation anomalies from the 30th of May to 7th of June coming out drier than normal through the UK island and most parts of northern Western Europe, including that. Notice how wet it is though still across much of southern Europe, particularly Spain and Portugal, but also southern Italy, Corsica, Sardinia, even down to North Africa. We see wetter and average conditions. Very unusual for this time of the year. Precipitation, I want to talk about this. We were that from uh, no school. I didn't do a video yesterday, so I'm going to get back into the stride. I didn't do it there. <laughs> 10 to 14 day yesterday. Latest wind flow map from uh, uh, no school net shows that uh, high pressure <laughs> is sitting over the top of the country. And uh, we're pulling in like a northeasterly wind today across England and Wales. And that's been quite a lot of clouding with it, especially to southern and eastern parts of the country. Right, let's go through the chart data. Then, Miss Avalanche, as you can make your run, is looking for midnight on Friday. High pressure, slap bank over the top of the country, mostly dry, fine, settled conditions then. Into uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, that high, <laughs> high pressure fest goes on. No changes at all, really. Just high pressure again, rooted and anchored right over the country. I can't, again, with high pressure dominating weather. Through the uh, weekend, and that high pressure sticking around into uh, the uh, middle of next week as well. So this gets us to midday Tuesday again. The high pressure at 1,030 millibars is right in over the top of the country. The GFS midnight run, all much of a much is high pressure again all the way over the weekend and into next week too. Um, moving up towards day 10, we start to get some lower pressure developing just out to the west and southwest. So we begin to move the wind more towards the southeast. That probably brings up some quite warm air from the south and from the southeast, but does hint at a little bit of a, um, I wouldn't necessarily say bungee breakdown, but hints at a little bit of a uh, showery interruption, let's say. With low pressure just to the west of Ireland, high pressure somewhere over Denmark. Winds in from the south southeast, so it would be warm, potentially very warm, but potentially with some heavy showers breaking out. But then the high pressure re strengthens again as we go further on uh, towards the middle of June. Find that high pressure coming back and strengthening, so mostly dry and very warm conditions there up to the end of the GFS midnight run. Gets us to the 15th of June today. Proper high pressure fest, really. But GFS 6 there again has that high pressure in control um up the edge week and into the weekend too we're high and dry day after day after day heading up towards day 10 again just a suggestion that wind turns into a warm or a very warm southerly southeasterly but lower pressure developing around this game and just to ourselves 
and southwest hints still a bit of a fungi breakdown the upper air temperatures are very warm and the hot air is actually sitting over france with a plus 15 celsius ice berm but that is kept at bay as this thundery low develops and pushes northwards and east so the jfs since then is actually showing like a classic sort of thundery breakdown around the 9th of the 10th of june that's for the period that we were doing our events um, forecast for earlier today, download and uh, Le Mans. So that would make for some very interesting events because it's only one GFS run. And then uh, that low pressure actually gets out of the way as we head up, head up towards the middle of June. High pressure sort of re-strengthens again close to the country and returns us back to drier and uh, warmer conditions once more if you're enjoying the video please can you like share and subscribe thank you so much everybody for doing that why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this all of our videos and don't forget to tell your friends about gas worthies and to uh, ask them to subscribe as well it's amazing it's incredible and thank you so much everybody uh for doing that uh, for gals weather this thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you uh so much we need to put around 50 subscribers that's all to get ourselves to uh 15.9k so we are getting so close to 16,000 subscribers now please give us a sub and thank you so much for doing that and don't get to your friends and family and and everybody to about rainbows uh hospice as well and uh just giving page and uh please give a donation if you can afford to do so in memory of my mum right okay going on to uh gm once more high pressure in control in the essential pro that high pressure sitting around the country through next weekend uh, as well. The high pressure bench sheep over GM starts moving up towards Greenland. So this is a little bit different for the GM. By day 10, the high pressure has become like a blocking feature around Greenland and Iceland. And we're starting to pull in what looks like a cooler and more showery east or north beast you in. There's quite a deep area of low pressure just to the west coast of uh, Portugal. Could that low push northwards? And uh, bring heavy rain with it. And uh, obviously, with the blocking out of high pressure around Greenland, bringing it northeasterly, we would turn not only wetter, but also colder or cooler if that happened. Uh, and then the ECM at WF looking like that. High pressure in the ascendancy on Friday. That high pressure remains in control through, throughout next week, to be honest. Next week is another week of high and dry weather all the way up to day 10. The high pressure remains anchored, anchored and rooted over the country. This precipitation forecast based on that. You should run from Tomecho.com. Again, we'll wrap up to move this quickly because there's no precipitation to talk of, really, uh, or barely any. Um, so loads of dry weather for the next 10 days. And this is the option on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. Gets us to the 9th of June for the Isaac Met Office. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, all of them, with an area of above average heights in the North Atlantic, heading up towards Greenland. And uh, with that, we're bringing in the wind from potentially a bit of a easterly, slightly of northeasterly direction. The high pressure still remains in control, though, bringing lots of dry and fine conditions. And then, in two week time, uh, these are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 14th of June. 30 members of the ECM on time of taking the high pressure into the Atlantic and moving it up towards Greenland um, with low pressure of Scandinavia and France. Just hints that it's turning more showery there, a little bit more unsettled. But 21 keep the high pressure going, bridging through the country and out into the North Atlantic. So that's going to be mostly dry, fine, and very warm conditions continuing up to mid June. CFSB2 finally, these are 500 millibar height and knowledge broken down into week periods. The first week period, rotation of the 30th of May to 5th of June. The coming week is dominated by high pressure right over top of the country. Most dry, fine, and warm conditions. Week 2 is going to be the 6th to the 12th of June. Again, high pressure in the North Atlantic and going up towards Greenland. Most dry, fine, could just be a little bit cooler with winds in from a slightly more northerly northeastly direction but to mostly dry and warm really week three is going to be the 13th to the 19th of june high pressure is in the north atlantic low pressure over uh, scandinavia and through france and much of southern southwest europe as well just also a little bit more unsettled uh, that week a little bit more showery around middle part of june but then look at this week four gets us back to high pressure again it's the 20th to the 26th of june high pressure comes back to the north of scotland much look it looks mostly dry and potentially very warm maybe even hot as winds come in from an easterly or a southeasterly direction goodness gracious me 
Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, subscribe. If you show Joe by doing that, drop a comment. And let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gals Well of it. So we thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that for us. And uh, make sure you tell your friends and family who haven't yet done so about Rainbow's Hospice and uh, ask them to give a donation to. And that would be absolutely lovely if you could do that. Um, right, I'll just tell you what's coming up tomorrow. So we're going to have the uh, 6 a.m. UK weather forecast, extended USA forecast, and there'll be a 10 to 14 day coming up for you tomorrow as well. So I shall see you tomorrow. But uh, for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.